Well, you've officially done it. You've clicked on this video, even though there appears to be the name of a generic baseball game in the title. And yes, that's correct. We're going to be looking at a baseball game. And why, you might ask? You don't look like a baseball guy. No, I am in fact not a baseball guy, or even very much of a sports guy. About as much baseball as I get is this uh, Duke Nukem Forever hat signed by John St. John. And while I can indeed wear this with uh, debatable effectiveness, we're still taking a look at this game. Why? Because my own personal nostalgia, and much like a badly placed planter's wart, it's a little weird at first, but eventually you grow to accept it. Like this. Microsoft Baseball 2000, developed by Whizbang Software Productions and published by Microsoft in 1999 for Windows PCs. It's obviously a pretty serious simulation, seeing as the box art shows Al Leiter throwing a baseball at your face so hard that he's blurring sideways. Welcome to the big leagues. Get ready to play ball right into the next millennium, at least if Y2K doesn't kill us first. Yep, looks like a baseball game, which is confirmed once inside the box, where you'll find a CD-ROM with the word baseball printed on it at least five times, and a manual with the word baseball contained on practically every page. Microsoft Baseball begins with a Microsoft logo, then a baseball logo, then a Microsoft Baseball logo on a menu screen. Al Leiter is once again gracing us with his posing skills, while you're given the option to play one of several one-off games, start or load the playoffs or a whole season, get some help, and change the options. Options are optional, but obviously of use, since you can not only change things like graphics and sound stuff, but alter the game's length, difficulty, and other assorted things to make your baseball experience more or less baseball-y. Jumping right into a single game is probably the first thing you'll want to do, since it lets you choose any team, stadium, and time of day right off the bat. <laughs> no pun intended. You can also just choose to play tonight's game from real life. Well, tonight, from back in 1999, that is. Look at the roster and pretend you know what you're doing by shuffling dudes around, choose your controller from anything you have hooked up, and play ball! Sportscaster Tom Brenneman will then brief you on what you've just chosen in case you already forgot, which is quite considerate. I'm Tom Brenneman, and today we're in Wrigley Field for the game between the Atlanta Braves and the Chicago Cubs. Then, depending on what side you're on, you'll either start by pitching or batting, because this is not an outfielder simulator, nor is it a hot dog vendor simulator, although now that I think about it, both could be pretty awesome. But anyway, if you're batting, you have a choice of multiple hitting styles before the pitcher pitches his pitch. And depending on the options and assists you chose before playing, it ranges between as simple as swinging at vaguely the right moment to as complex as aiming the swing and having to be more precise with your timing. Paying attention to the strike zone that pops up in the middle of the screen is of utmost importance, since that's kind of how baseball works. If the ball is thrown through that zone and you don't hit it, it's a strike. If it's outside and you don't hit it, it's not. And if you don't see any kind of thing with the zone at all, you've probably turned it off and have made the game extremely hard for yourself. As with any baseball sim, determining when the simulation wants you to hit the ball is a bit of a learning experience, so playing the Home Run Derby is a great opportunity to figure out the game's hitting quirks, since it throws perfect pitches your way every time and all you have to do is focus on your timing. Not only that, but setting up your own custom selection of late 90s baseball superstars to just knock balls out of the park is pretty awesome to behold. And this is from when steroids were still cool, so it's all kinds of inspiring. But anyway, pitching is also a thing, although it takes place from the same perspective as batting, so make sure not to forget which one you're doing. That can get really awkward. Choose your pitch, place the reticle somewhere inside or outside the strike zone, and hope you're gragmatics. Now, there's no tutorial or anything, so it makes some assumptions as far as you knowing what these pitching and batting styles are and when it's best to use them. So if you're not familiar, then just press the button on the thing and see what happens. Eventually, something will happen, and a player will do some baseball things, and you'll either win or lose. Yeah, sports! Now, while it may not look like much now, back in the day, this game was unbelievably cool to me. When I first ran across the demo to this, I was still content playing Tiger Electronic Baseball handheld games and Bo Jackson Baseball on the NES. And sure, you had the Hardball, MLB, and Triple Play series of games, but I didn't have those. I had this one. And Microsoft Baseball supported 3D acceleration from the get-go, so it made good use of my 12 megabyte Voodoo 2 video card, and as such looked stunning. Look at how realistic these players' faces are! 
Look at these detailed crowds. You can see individual people. Look at the, the grass with the dirt and the white lines. Okay, so maybe it looks a bit dated now. A lot dated. Like total crap now, but back then it looked like real life and coming from 8-bit baseball games, it was amazing. So that was half the reason I played this, because I was already part of that whole PC gaming master race thing in the 90s. The other reason I played Baseball 2000 was because of the other stuff. Little things, like making your batter spaz the heck out, and then calmly hitting the ball at the last second like a boss. Or catching the ball with a baseman or outfielder, but refusing to throw to anyone else, then running around like a brain-damaged warthog on amphetamines. Or hearing the crowd cheer for the batter stepping up to the plate and getting pissed off they're not cheering for you and then blatantly throwing a fastball at his penis. <gasps> or right at the middle of his stupid face. <gasps> the game just didn't care. It would let you pull all sorts of shenanigans and I loved it. I also loved the sounds from the crowd. It just made me feel like I was actually at a baseball game. Especially those guys hawking food non-stop. Yeah, hot dogs, peanuts guy. <laughs> ah, my brother and I still say that phrase to each other randomly, and I must admit it's half of what makes me remember this game at all. And when you're tired of making dudes run around like morons and dreaming of hot dogs, peanuts, you can also check out playoff and season games and enjoy the exact same gameplay, just with a rigid layer of structure and statistics surrounding it. If you want to play just the playoffs, you can do that by selecting the eight teams you want and then going from there, but playing a season is where the real career mode stuff happens, and this takes you through an entire season of Major League Baseball from April to as late as November. Obviously, this would take a huge amount of time to get through and play every single game at the full nine plus innings each, but hey, if you want to do that, go right ahead. It's not going to stop you. Otherwise, you can just simulate the games you don't want to play, or frick, you can just simulate the entire season altogether and even see who wins the World Series. And that's about it for Microsoft Baseball 2000. It's a baseball game, it's got a roster that is no longer relevant, and is generally outdated in almost every way. Yet here I am talking about it, so I guess that makes me a bit strange. It's about to get stranger because I say if you come across it, I would pick it up, because it's actually pretty fun. Not only is it a PC gaming and baseball related timepiece, but it plays solidly and you can abuse baseball players to your heart's content. But why play this one in particular? It's not the first one in the series, that would be Baseball 3D 1998 edition, and the only sequel, Baseball 2001, added the league management engine from the Baseball Mogul games and several other improvements. So where does that leave us? Uh, this is neither the first, nor is it the best, but it is the one I remember. Therefore, it is superior, and you can say nothing bad about it because my nostalgia is better than your logic. And if you'd like more rock-solid reasoning on outdated computer game recommendations, feel free to click some of these. And I make more every week, so subscribing could prove to be useful, as well as looking me up on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and in the middle of one juicy hot dog. And as always, thank you for watching.